we have already learned about the different mathematical processes and techniques that are used in machine learning and deep learning. We have already shown the connections and how all of these concepts and theories are related to each other and how they are used to a certain machine learning project. So in this series, actually, we talked about linear regression. More specifically, we talked about how to model a linear regression algorithm. And also, we've compared the use of OLS or ordinary least squares and ridge regression. With that being said, we've already studied about the benefits we can derive from each of them. So in this lesson and in the next few more lessons, what we will have is we are going to make a machine learning project, which is about energy prediction of the different home appliances. So in this lesson, what we are going to have as our goal is that we're going to predict the energy consumption of homes. And so with this, we have to follow through the process of doing a machine learning project. So I have a lesson on that or a playlist on that that talks about our guide on how to do or make a machine learning project. But before we continue, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there because we do have a lot of free data science courses for you guys. We do have mastering machine learning algorithm, the deep learning mathematics, the different data science algorithms, the data science tips, and many more. Also, please don't forget to click the notification bell so that you would be notified every time we have a new session. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share this with your friends. So let's start with our machine learning project. And of course, the first thing that we're going to have is we need to have a data set. And for us to be able to have a data set, we need to have an access to a certain database. So in this project, what we're going to have is we're going to use the data from the UCI machine learning repository. But actually, we do have a lot of um, repositories. You can use Kaggle and some other resources because the most important thing in any machine learning project or deep learning project is that you need to have your data. And without your data, you don't have any project. So we've said that it's always best to start from scratch. And when we say scratch, it's always about creating your own data. But in some cases, we don't actually have access to data repositories or databases. So for this machine learning project, we have this data set from this repository. So usually in most repositories, if not all, you are just going to download the data. So in this case, you're going to download here. So just click this one, then you will be set to go. And here you are going to click this and you could have it downloaded. But then in my case, I have already downloaded this one. So we can proceed to the next step. And also in some cases for some data sources, they have this API that you can use to have access to their data. And also for some cases, you can request for their API so that you would be able to have the permission and your access to their data repository would be legal. And so again, um, here we always talk about the legality of accessing to a certain databases because that is always, and I believe, a must and ethical to always ask for permission from the owner of a certain database. Unless it's public, because it's public then, you can just access that data repository or database without any permission from the owner. So this is our data. And here, I have actually made a folder for that. And this is the folder. So I always suggest that you are going to have your separate folder for each data set that you have because it makes your work more streamlined and it makes your, of course, data more organized and you can just easily find it whenever you want, right? So let's look at the data, how it looks like. So this is our data. This is energy data. So we are going to open it so that we would be able to at least have an overview of what this one is all about. This is in Excel. 
and we would be able to see the different variables or attributes of the data set. So here it is. So we have, of course, here the date, the appliance, then the light, then we have a T1, R81, T2, R82, T3, R83, T4, R84, T5, R85. And maybe you would like to ask me what this one is all about. So what is T1? What about R81? Because the attribute name is very long. So this particular data set uses its unique abbreviation of the attributes. Let's first go back to the file from the website. And here we could see that it has 29 attributes, right? And also based on this information, we could see that we have 1,000, oh sorry, 19,735 number of instances and we don't have any missing values, uh, probably because this was already cleaned when this data set was already donated in this set. However, in our next video, what we're going to have is still, we would like to show to you how to process the cleaning and pre-processing stage of machine learning project so that we would be able to really understand the process of how we do a machine learning project. So what are these 29 attributes all about? Let's try to look at this one. So I have actually downloaded this information from this one. Okay, here it is actually. And I have just copied that one or these ones here so that it would be easy for me to just go back from time to time whenever I would like to review. And for me to be able to do it even without the presence of the internet. So here, T1 is temperature in kitchen area, that is in Celsius. RH1, that's the humidity in kitchen area. T2 is a temperature in living room area. Then RH2, humidity in living room area. And we have there a lot of more attributes that we are going to use for our machine learning project. And of course, in our feature engineering, Later on, as we go along with the process of our machine learning project, we would be able to really understand how we use these features in building our model. And also, we would be able to understand that not all of these features would be used depending on the outcomes of our feature selection. I hope you're going to follow through this project because I'm going to give you, in as much as I can, the complete steps of making a machine learning project. So now that we already have the overview of our data, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to set our environment. And to create our environment, what we are going to have is we are going to open the Anaconda prompt. So this one, let's click that and we are shown this kind of screen. And maybe you would like to ask me why is it that we have to make a new environment for our machine learning project. It's not actually a must. However, as far as making a machine learning project and based on experience, it is always better to make a new environment so that it would be easy for you to navigate through your project and identify what kind of libraries and packages you're going to use for the project. So let's always remember this, that not all projects would need the same packages or libraries. Let's remember that each library has its own dependencies and these dependencies find their applications based on what kind of machine learning project at hand. So that is why it is always better to start our machine learning project from scratch that is by using a new environment. So what is the next thing to do? So for us to be able to make a new environment, we are going to ask first our Google how to do this. So let's go to creating Anaconda environment. So the first one that you could see here would tell us and let's click this one and let's find how to make a machine learning environment. So creating an environment with commands. Let's click that. Then it is in number three. So to create an environment with a specific version of Python. So we are just going to copy this one and then we are going to paste that on our screen and then we are going to change the name of our environment so in this case what we're going to name this is let's use energy prediction okay and also um we're going to use python 3.7 
So let's change this one from 3.6 to 3.7. And when you're done with that, let's click enter and let's wait for a moment. Okay, so now our environment is installed. And here we could see the different packages and these packages are actually the default packages. So anyway, before we continue, I would like to first note that here we are still on our base environment, meaning to say that it's still the, the base one that we still use pending the approval of our new environment. So for us to have a new environment that is approved, we're going to proceed by typing Y here, which means we're going to proceed. So Y means yes. Let's type Y, and then let's click enter. And then let's wait for a few moments. So we are done being verified and our transaction is already executed. The next thing to do is that we're going to activate our environment. And again, the name of our environment is Energy Prediction. So I actually got it wrong, so it, it should have been Energy Prediction. But just for the sake of this tutorial, we will just have Energy Prediction. And how to activate our environment is that we are going to type here, Activate, and then the name of our environment, which is Energy Prediction. Energy Prediction. So let's click Enter. Okay, so now we have already our new environment so as you could see here the name base is now gone and it is now energy prediction which is our new environment it means to say that our new environment is already active and with this we are now ready to read our data set so let's first clear this one so okay and with this, I just would like you to see how I read the environment and how I read our database or our data set. So for us to be able to see or read our data set, we will go to the path where we saved our data. So here, we saved our data here. So this is the original, All right? Then let's just copy this one. So this is copy. Then we're going to paste the path location here. So CD, then copy paste here, then enter. The next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to see the directory of our data. So let's type dir, which means directory, enter. So here we could see that it has 11,979,363 energy data.csv. We have 11,979,363. 363 bytes and more okay so from here we are now going to go to our jupyter notebook we are going to open it by typing jupyter notebook then enter so in some cases we could see this kind of information and it says jupyter is not recognized as an internal or external command operable program or bat file so it means to say that jupyter notebook is not yet in the system, it's not yet installed. So what we're going to do is that we're going to install Jupyter Notebook. So pip install Jupyter Notebook, enter. So let's just wait for a few moments while our Jupyter Notebook is being installed. Okay. Okay, so our Jupyter Notebook is successfully installed and now we are ready to go to our Jupyter Notebook. So let's do it again. Let's type Jupyter Notebook. Let's click Enter. Then let's wait. Okay, so now we are here in our Jupyter Notebook and then here we could see our data set. So this is just the preliminary thing which is also the most important thing to do because we have first to have access to our data and we have to connect our location path to our Jupyter Notebook so that we could do all the processes. So this is just the beginning of our machine learning project journey. There are still a lot of more processes that we are going to make until we could reach the point of our deployment. So do you want to know more about this channel? Just click the card on your screen because we do have a lot of free data science courses 
for you guys. We do have machine learning algorithm, the deep learning mathematics, the data science tips, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn and upskill for free.